market. Everyone wants to sell you model airplane wire for like a dollar each, but I just lucked out and got like 300 of them for 30 bucks. You can see right here, this says, warning, this uh, trampoline should not be used by two people. <laughs> so personally, I just have a hoard of stuff, and it's, uh, it's kind of like being a, uh, a cook. You know, you've got green onions and you've got noodles. And you just go around and grab the things you need. And personally, when I'm missing something, I just uh, put a, usually what I'm missing is kind of useless, and it's just a matter of finding the right person that's got the useless object. And I just uh, post on Craigslist or on Recycle that I'm looking for this, and I get a couple calls. Last week or two, I uh, put a call out. I needed a bent metal cabinet to house some welding gear. And I got three calls back. None of which gave me the cabinet, but one of them gave me 90 bucks to make some metal set for them. And there was a Craigslist post to go to Channel Islands University and gut their art center. So I went and I got a more pendant. Things will come out to you if you ask for them. Well, the mushroom one was based about polygons, where you just drop the information there and say it takes eight points. And there's a set called polar polar placement. There's a lot of different ways to describe where you are in it appears, but there's normal Cartesian x y. There's also polar, which means I am arbitrary start point. I'm this amplitude and this phase. So phase is like 0 to 360, and then amplitude is how far out. So all you do is choose eight phases, and then you say amplify, and then each one of them is ticking away when it, when it hits something. Well, this is an, an empty space. When it hits something, it stops, and then the other ones keep going. The one that's a little bit more mushroom-like is the one that you have a, a white, white picture on a black background, and you press go on a place, and then it checks its eight Friends, and whichever ones are white, it, whichever one's the whitest, if, if that doesn't sound supremacist, whichever one seems most likely one to go, it goes into and it, it turns itself blue. Once it's there, it says which one is the closest to white or to brightness, and then it goes there and presses and it turns itself blue. So it has to do with the the program is going to move in a direction necessarily because. The directions it's got come from are, are deleted from the opportunities to move. Just like a mushroom does when it eats the energy in like a concentric circle moving out. The other one, the, the tendril one, that was just based on trying to make a tree program. And it was it's kind of a living program where it's got a stalk and then it's got outshoots, and then as it grows, the outshoots grow too. I don't think that the, the branches have branches. But if you think about it, it's, it can get kind of crazy if the branches, branches and branches have branches. You can kind of lose track of things. The other thing that's hard to do with that program is, is um, overlap. Because in a two-dimensional tree, you want it to grow and kind of fill in the negative space. But every time, at, by the time you have two or three branches, they're going to overtwine each other. And you won't really be able to see what's originally there. So it wasn't necessarily conscious of itself. It was just a a program for expansion. <coughs> so this guy right here, a lot of lights are on. You know, I just put it in the back of my truck, knocked it over. I, I was wondering about how low it put the electrified fence. The lower it is, the more it's going to go on. Ideally, you know, you want none on, and then you have the answer during um, Stravinsky's right spring go through it. And then you just see it magnify exactly what I did to it. The real world and the, the, the wonky nature of materials, it'll give you something else. But I think this is a kind of animism. I, I think that I'm a, 
working towards and have come from being kind of a shaman, kind of like a translator of energies. And this is another example of a tool that a shaman would use. Early electronic sculptures probably were like uh, 20,000 years ago, where uh, an ancient man would just take a gourd, fill it with quartz crystals, and shake it. And in the fire, and in the night, they would cause piezoelectricity and they'd light themselves. So just these tools. Um, for a new generation, this is a this is the closest thing to magic I think got. I've never seen the David Copperfield, but that's illusion. I think this is more kind of. I think this is you know it's real. This is un sadly it's real because I touch this and if it doesn't do what I want. It does what it can do. That, that was my question, um, Derek. Is, is is most of your stuff kind of random? Like you don't really have the control as the artist, or do you have the control over it, or is that part of your art that it is random? Well, if I were to say that um, artist is kind of like an analogy to a god of a world, and art artwork is their world. I'd say I'm, I'm cool with the DS perspective, where I just start something and as best as it can survive on its own. Like if you're an author, you write a book and then it critiques, or in this case, the material world breaks stuff apart, change it. Sometimes I'll, I'll make a world, and I won't even really finish it because it's. I saw what it can do, and it was it was beautiful in a way where. I don't know. That was, that was enough for me. A lot of times there's a. There's an argument or a controversy about what an artist is doing. Are they doing it for the society? Are they doing it to bring it back? I'd say well, one of the good reasons why I like to share my stuff is because I'm mortal, and the faster I can show other people things that I've accomplished, the cooler the world can get. If an idea is infectious and it can travel faster. But I definitely say random and kind of like incomplete. Our teachers like, I can see that scar. What's with these uh, like file clamps? Like, no artist would use a file. We got to use some bracketing systems. Yep. As you were growing up, was electronics and electricity always an interest, or did that sort of evolve for you over time? Mm, I think. Uh, Nintendo changed a lot. My dad wanted to throw our Nintendo away. It was kind of traumatic. My little brother plays me about like six or more hours of video games a day. He's kind of lost in it. When we were young, my dad said, you know, limit three hours a day. You know, that, that's 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 something. I I definitely tried to channel a lot of uh, video game playing and uh, escapism through uh, computers. And just the blue screen, like there's a screen with you're radiating at you, and you're kind of interested in it. You play like a role playing game or a, kind of like a map terrain game, and you kind of feel like you're dreaming. So, definitely came from uh, early console systems. Yeah? Um, do you make a living at doing, at making this stuff? Or? No. I was a substitute teacher for about five or six years. Uh, I've got, I've definitely got summer jobs lined up. I get uh, a whopping six, six weeks a year where I get to make full time amazing pay, teaching kids how to make video games. But that's just because they're out of school. And economy how it is, I'm lucky enough to be unemployed because America has a nice little social protection system called um, unemployment. If you make a living and you don't follow yours, you fall out of that living then. I'll take care of you for a couple of years. So I'm riding that wave, and uh, I apply to master's schools every year. I think I'm a little bit, you know, like we've talked about, I'm kind of random and chaotic, and, and they want someone that's, you know, going to put their stuff in front of a white background and they take pictures of it. They want someone that you can not see how it was made, you can just see a finished product. A lot of my art needs uh, at least a video, if not, you're here watching it to perceive what it is. I uh, gave my stuff to Irvine. They didn't ask for a sheet of info about what the stuff is. They said, just send us your CD with 20 pictures. I sent them the 20 